and welcome to the Parkinson's Foundation PD Health at Home Fitness Fridays. I'm Sam. And I'm Paul. And we are physical therapists at Healthy Aging PT in Wakefield, Massachusetts. Today's class will focus on strength and balance with the added twist of dual tasking. A dual task allows us to be better prepared to handle the typical distractions we encounter every day. So let's get into the workout. We are going to start with a warm up. We're just going to warm up the body from head to toe get the body moving. So we'll start just feet in a comfortable stance. And of course, with all of these movements, if you want to modify it or feel like you need some more support, feel free to hold onto a chair or you can also take these uh, movements sitting. So we'll just start off moving the neck. We're just going to rotate side to side, warming up, standing up nice and tall or sitting if you choose to do that. One more to each side. And then looking straight ahead, we'll side bend. So just think of bringing your ear towards your shoulder, bring it up and over to the other side. Try not to bring your shoulder up towards your ear, just isolating your neck as what's moving right now. And we'll do one more to each side. And then bring the head back to the middle. We're gonna do some shoulder circles. So we'll swing the arms forward, nice big reach to the ceiling and circle back. We'll spread out a little bit, nice big circle. And then reverse your circle. So try to reach back first, circle up and over, just with whatever range of motion feels comfortable for you. And then relax your arms. We'll take uh, the hands across your shoulders like so, and just rotating. Now moving lower down in your spine, little rotation, keep your feet planted. And again, you can definitely do this holding a chair. Just use one hand on the chair or both. One more. And then facing the front, bring your arms by your sides. We're gonna side bend. So slide one hand down your leg, stand back up and over to the other side. Sliding the leg, again, your feet stay planted, not shifting your weight too much side to side, just bending at the waist essentially. And one more and standing up nice and tall. We're gonna take knee hugs. So bringing one knee in for a hug, bring it down and then switch. And you take this at your own pace. If you wanna hold your balance for a little longer, feel free. You can have one hand on a chair or a counter and use the other hand to hold your leg. And you can do the same thing seated, of course. Very nice, one more and then shake that out. We're gonna take hamstring scoops. So bringing one foot forward, bending forward, you kind of scoop down your leg, step together, and then switch. Nice big reach. However big you wanna go with the arms, you can do that. But just warming up the back of the legs. One more on each side. Very good. And last thing we're gonna do is a little heel and toe raise. So feet apart, lifting up on the toes, come down and then going back on the heels. And you can of course do this holding a chair. Sometimes shifting back can be a little trickier. Lift up, bring it back. One more and go ahead and shake that out. All right, now we're gonna do a little aerobic workout. So aerobic workouts are a little quicker pace. They get our hearts beating, they get us taking nice deep breaths, and they help get the blood going to our brain so we're ready to do some trickier exercises. So you can do these standing, and if you need a chair to hold on to, you're welcome to hold in front or to the side. We're gonna start with some butt kicks. We're going to go about 30 seconds and then we're going to take a little 15 second break. So you can put your hands on your waist or again, if you need to have a chair here, chair here, that's fine. 
Make sure you got room behind you and you're gonna bring that foot back up and down and we're gonna get into a nice rhythm. And you want a nice, quick kind of a flick. All right, we're gonna keep that pace, keep breathing. Make sure you don't hold your breath. We're gonna keep going, we're about halfway through. That's it. Keep at it, we're almost there. Couple more. All right. And we are gonna take a quick little break, shake it out, and we're gonna get ready for our next one, uh, which depending on your ability, we're gonna either do a jumping jack, which is a classic hop, come back. If you think you need something that's a little more controlled, we're gonna do a step jack, which is when you're gonna come up and just touch with one foot come back together, tap with the other foot. So I can do the jumping jacks, Sam can do the step jacks, and we'll go for about 30 seconds. Are you ready? And we're gonna go up, down, up, down, up, down. That's it, down. Keep that pace. Don't give up. Keep breathing. There you go, you're doing great. Keep at it, get that heart going, get those lungs going. 10 seconds left, you can do it. There you go, keep going. Woo, almost there, a couple more seconds. That's it. All right, and take a break, shake it out. Good, maybe you're starting to break a sweat after that last one. All right, so our next one is gonna be a squat. So for that, um, you're gonna hold your hands out in front like Superman. If you need something to hold on to, you can put a chair right in front here and just use it lightly. You're going to stand feet a little wider than the shoulders and you're gonna drop those hips back. I want you to watch where my knees are, right? They stay over the toes. They don't come together like this. And back up. So we're gonna do that 30 seconds. And down, up, down, up. If you want, you can add a nice kind of flow to it. As you come up, you can bring the arms back, get some air movement. That's it. All right, we're halfway through, keep going. Just drop as low as you are comfortable. There are no awards given out for going any lower. We're just getting warmed up here. So do what you can control. All right, and good. All right, so now we're nice and warmed up. We're ready to take on some dual task challenges. So we're gonna begin uh, with a basic movement that we're gonna go through and practice. And then we're gonna layer on a little more of a challenge physically. And then we're gonna end with a challenge Cognitively, so you're gonna to have to do some thinking on this one. So our first one is gonna be a simple march. So we can have a chair again if you need to. Sam can grab the chair and show you. So it can be on your side, uh, so your knees don't hit it. Or if you really need to, you just have to be careful, right? So we're gonna march. This is just going through the basic movements. So we haven't added anything yet. So we're just kind of marching back and forth. We're working on balance. We're working on shifting our weight from side to side, staying nice and controlled. We're keeping a nice pace, just like before. That's it. You wanna make sure you get those knees up the same height each time, right? So be careful as you're going that they don't get smaller and smaller. Use the same size march each time. All right. We'll go through a little bit more. All right. Good. So that's our basic march. Now we're gonna add a little bit of a component to it. So you will need a little bit of room in front of you and behind you for this. So I'm gonna back up a little bit. We're gonna add a walking forward and a walking backward. So let's just practice it first. So as I'm doing these marches, I'm gonna just come forward with each step. Onto the heel, 
and I'm going to just move a little bit forward and then I'm going to start moving backwards. So if you need some support, you can just keep that chair next to you and your steps will just be a little shorter. Or if you do this in your kitchen, you have a nice long counter, that can be really nice too. You can get a lot more movement. However many steps you can take in your space, we're just going to keep going back and forth. All right, so let's keep going. So we're moving forward, each step heel to toe. So we have our weight shift again, side to side. And we have a nice way to practice lifting those feet up. Like we're trying to step over things, cracks in the sidewalk, tree limbs, whatever you can think of. All right, good. Let's keep going. All right. We'll do a couple more. Good. All right. So now we're going to have the cognitive piece. So this is what today is all about. So while we're doing this, we're going to layer on a, something we have to think about. So why don't we do the same way we just did. Um, you can march in place, or if you want to really challenge yourself, you can try to move back and forward as you march. But we're going to pick a category, and you are going to try to name everything in that category that you possibly can think of. Uh, and this is where it gets fun. You'll have to be creative a little bit, and it's gonna force you to not have to think about your movements as much. So why don't we pick as a category animals you'd find at the zoo? So we'll go for about a minute and we'll try to, I'll go, <laughs> I'll go first, and then if I stall out, you can uh, bail me out, and we'll keep going. I will do my best. All right, perfect. So, all right, so we're ready. So, either march in place, or if you want to try a little bit more forward and backward while you're doing this, we're going to start naming animals. All right, so here we go. And let's see, zebra, you'd see a lion at the zoo, uh, the gorillas, I suppose. Um... I guess you could see a camel. I'm trying to think of the zoos I've been to. I swear I saw at least one camel. Um, I've seen bison at a zoo. I've seen, oh my goodness, now I can't think of it. <laughs> There's always kinds of birds. Penguins, right? They usually have penguins, or maybe that's aquariums. I was gonna say, if the aquarium comes, <laughs> I can do a whole yeah. bunch. <laughs> what else is at the zoo? Um, Monkeys. Monkeys. There's like different kinds of monkeys. Um, I think they usually have other, they maybe have a tiger, mm. maybe have mountain lion. Say mountain um, lion. Did you say jaguar? Jaguars, yep. Um, I don't think they have any bugs at the zoo. Well, they're not part of the exhibit anyway, I suppose. <laughs> no. Um, I've seen different kinds of rodents at the zoo. I maybe, can't... maybe not around here, but honey badgers. Honey badgers. All right. <laughs> Excellent. All right, let's take a break. So the time flies by, right? That was well over a minute that we were just doing that. Um, all right, so let's, let's hand tape it away to the next one. Yeah. All right, so do you want to switch places? Yes. Um, so I will demonstrate the. Um, we're going to do a sit to stand. Paul will show you again if you need some more support, holding the chair, counter, whatever you have available to you. But we'll follow the same format. We'll start with the movement add a physical challenge to it, and then challenge the brain a little bit afterwards. So all we are going to do oh, is a sit to stand. Um, yes. So, or um, a squat, holding the back of the chair. Yeah. So I'm grabbing my chair. So all we will do, hands can come forward or across your chest. You just stand up, sit back down. And what Paul is demonstrating is that squat like we did earlier. So you can just hold the back of a chair, hold your counter and do a squat. If that full up and down does not feel as confident for you. So again, arms across the chest or arms forward. The arms forward tends to help us get up a little bit easier. We'll just try a couple more like that so you're familiar with the movement. Very good, and take a breather, sitting or standing. 
So the physical challenge we will add to that is as you stand up, we will come to a heel raise and then sit back down. So it looks like this, arms forward, you stand up, lift your heels, lower down, and then sit back down. So you're just combining the sit to stand with one heel raise, and then you sit. Standing up, heels up, and back down. And if you're doing the squat, you might find that you move a little more quickly through it. So take everything at your own pace of course. Very good. And then we will take a quick break. We'll talk about our next brain challenge. So what we will do is say the months of the year backwards. So out loud for yourself, you can do it, you know, quietly inside your head. But if you can do it out loud, you're going to start with December, say the uh, months of the year backwards as you do these tasks. All right. So again, sit to stand with the heel raise if you want that added challenge. And then we say the date or <laughs> the months of the year backwards. Arms come forward and we'll start. December, November, October, September, August, July, June, May, April, March, February, January, December, and you keep going with it at your own speed. With that sit to stand, lifting the heels and continuing the months of the year backwards. Try to get one full cycle through on your own. few more seconds here. Last one. And take a breather. Shake it out. All right. Nice. We're going to switch spots again. Paul will lead right. us through our next one. Let's get a little space. So once again, Sam will kind of show you with the chair in case you need a little bit of help with balance. So this one's gonna focus a little bit more on balancing. So we're gonna work on our tandem stance. So what that means is you're going to have one foot that goes in the back and your other foot is going to go right in front of it so they're in a line like that. And your toes should kind of come just up against your heel but not pressed hard into each other. If you need to hold something for this, that's fine. It's never a bad idea to have something just kind of on standby, just in case if you start to wobble, you can careen yourself back to position. So our first round, we are just going to try to hold this position for a full minute. So we're going to stand and just think happy thoughts and just try to stay as calm and still as you can. That being said, it is normal to move and wobble, and that is part of the exercise. If you start to lose position, just do your best to try to bring yourself back up. If you veer a lot and you have to tap and hold yourself, that's fine. Just get right back in. We're going to keep going. That's it. We're a little more than halfway through. Keep it going. Just remember to breathe and try to stay relaxed. Try not to be super tense and rigid because that will just make you wobble more. All right, a little bit longer, almost there. Okay, all right, good. And we're gonna switch, let's try the other foot. So you may find there is a difference. Having one foot or the other in the front or the back, you might feel more secure or you might find you're much less secure and that's fine, that's part of the exercise. So we're gonna get in this position. We're gonna hold it one minute. And again, just try to stay relaxed. Don't be rigid. You can have a little soft bend in your knees. Your arms can be loose. Um, if you have to kind of use your bumpers, I call them every now and again, that's okay. Just try to hold that position as best you can. And just stay nice and relaxed. Got about 20 more seconds here. We're just gonna hang on. All right, almost there. 
home stretch, guys. Hang in there. All right, and good. Step away. So, how can we add a little more of a challenge to that? So, you can do this. How about I'll take the weight, and then you could just do it with your arm. Perfect. We have to stand a little bit apart so we don't hit each other. So, go back. Whichever foot was in the front first, you're going to put that there. If you have something to hold, just kind of plan your space so that you have some room. Um, how about I do... I'm going to have, if my right foot is in the front, I'm going to hold the weight in my left hand. Or if you're not using a weight, just be prepared to move your left hand. So right's in front, left is to the side, and we're going to reach it out to the side. Come up if your shoulder's comfortable, and back down. It's a slow, steady movement. Let's see if we can get through about 10 of them there. Good. And as you move that to the side, you'll find your body has to compensate and move a little bit. So if you keep going, good. Just do your best to stay still. If you have to hold for a little bit of support, that's okay. Just try not to have a death grip or you can hover the hand above and just kind of use it when you need to. All right, we have just a couple more here. Good. And one more, excellent, all right, good. Now, we're gonna switch it up. So that means this time my left foot is coming in front and I'm gonna be moving my right arm. So if you're using a weight, and this is just a three pound weight, by the way, we don't need anything heavy. We're gonna move it to the right side, left foot's in front, up nice and tall, and then it's gonna be reach out, bring it up as much as your shoulder's comfortable two good try to stay loose don't be rigid just kind of flow with it like you're riding a train or maybe on a surfboard all right good all right we're about halfway through that it's a nice slow steady pace it's nice to slow it down a little after some of those big squats and sit the stands all right we have just a couple more good and all right, all right, let's put the weight down. So for our big cognitive challenge, our dual tasking, we're gonna try to balance two things at once. The first thing is you, and the second thing, I am using this walking pole. You can use a cane, um, anything that you can fit in one hand. You could even use, if you have like a small ball, um, you can be creative. Water bottle. Water would be bottle great. would be good. No glass, just in case you should drop it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll put, just like before, how about I'll put my right foot forward and then I'm going to hold in my left hand. I don't have to hold it out away from me, I can just hold it in comfortable. And for a little bit, maybe half a minute or so, I'm going to try to balance. And as you notice, it's a lot more wobbling and wiggling around than it was before, right? Our brain is stuck trying to work out two things at the same time. All right, we'll keep going a little longer and okay, good. And let's switch, let's get that other leg. So I've got my left forward, I've got my right hand doing the balancing and I'm gonna go. So just trying to stay upright, trying to keep this balanced. And good, keep going if you can. And if, if you have to stop and reset, then that's fine. You can set your timer, 30 seconds. And if you lose it, no need to stop the timer, just get it back up, pick it up again. All right. And good. All right. Excellent. Up next, we're going to grab another prop. Um, we are going to be using these scarves. I don't imagine that you will have a scarf like this hanging around your home. You could blow up a balloon to use that. Um, honestly, you know, a, a small article of clothing, a handkerchief would work great. 
Um, I wouldn't use a full length winter scarf, a little too long, I just don't want it getting in the way for you. But anything you can toss, a dish towel, small dish towel or face towel would work well for this as well. So I'll come over here, I will have Paul over by the chair just to show a modified version if you need it, um, where you can hold the chair. So all we will start off doing is we'll stand feet together if you can. Um, we're going to toss the scarf, balloon, towel, whatever you have from one hand to the other. If you really wanted to get fancy, you could take two scarves and try to crisscross them as you go, but just throwing and catching. So this is our base movement. We'll add a little bit more movement to this in a bit. Just make sure that this feels safe. So obviously you'll be following that scarf with your eyes. So you wanna make sure that you feel comfortable just standing like this before we add any movement. We'll do a couple more seconds here. And again, Paul's showing you can hold the chair, toss it with one hand, switch hands, um, whichever one is grabbing the chair. All right, so what we'll do is add a little bit of movement to this. We're gonna be stepping side to side, so you will need a little bit of space to move around. Of course, make sure your path is clear, especially if you have a rug or something on the floor, make sure that you stay on that rug um, and you feel confident that there is nothing you could trip on. Paul will show a similar option holding the chair where you can tap one foot out to the side as you toss your scarf and then switch. So you've always got a hand on the chair, you're not gonna be moving in space. I will show you moving side to side. So just take a few steps as you're tossing your scarf and then go the other direction. So hopefully you'll have a little more space to move around in your room, trying to toss as you step. And you can take this much slower. You can take one step, one toss, one step, one toss, or have the two go at the same time time. That's going to be a little more challenging as you focus on the scarf. A couple more seconds like that. And then take a break. All right, so we're going to add our brain challenge to that as if that's not enough already. We feel like we're in the circus, right? Uh, we're going to count backwards from 100 by three. So 100, 97, 94, et cetera, et cetera. You can say that out loud to yourself as you're moving around with your scarf or staying in place behind your chair, tossing it as well. So I'll verbally take you through part of it and then I'll let you take over for yourself. So we'll start off just with the movement, stepping or tapping to the side, throwing that scarf, and we will start the counting. 100, 97, 94, 91, 88, 85, 82, and you keep going at your own pace. Try to count out loud, but of course you can do mental math if you prefer, or if you don't want to disrupt any, anyone else in your home. And just be aware of, you know, can you keep the scarf moving and keep yourself moving as we've added this brain challenge. Oftentimes it'll become a little more tricky to manage all of these different things going on and see if it affects how you're moving around. Are you maybe not taking as big of a step to the side? Are you not picking up your feet quite as much? Things like that can often happen when we've got a lot going on in the brain. Couple more seconds here. All right and shake it out. I'm gonna set the scarf down. We will switch for one last brain challenge. All right. So we are gonna be doing some lunges. So you'll wanna make sure you have a little bit of room in front and a little bit of room behind. So if you have a chair, you can have it on your side. Why don't we just do some basic forward lunges first. Um, so that's gonna be standing, kind of feet shoulder width apart and pick a foot, you're gonna step it forward. That foot goes flat and you're gonna come down a little bit, back up and push your feet back together. And then why don't we switch? So the other foot comes forward, drop down, back up. It's not really too important how deep you drop 
down. It depends on you, it depends on your knees, it depends on what you can control. But these should feel nice and smooth. Nice step out, down, back up. We'll try to do a couple more here if we can. All right, forward, back, right, and then left. All right. Let's do a backward lunge. So this is gonna be the same idea, except now you're gonna step back and drop down. And then as you rise, you come back to the front feet together. So we start with the feet together, we end with the feet together. Sam showing you can have something to hold if you need. Well, I did the wrong one, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> All right, switching sides, good. Let's do a couple more. Stepping back. All right, and good. So now we've got forward lunges, we've got backward lunges. So let's add another physical challenge, which is a lateral lunge. So a lateral lunge, you're gonna need a little room on your sides, and it's gonna be a step to the side I'm going to bend this knee, I'm gonna keep this knee straight, and I push back up, feet together. Why don't we switch sides? So left comes out, bending the left knee, keeping the right knee straight, and then I push back up. You have to push with enough oomph to kind of bring yourself back. What you don't want is to come up and then have to kind of teeter back over. So a couple more, over, up, and then over and up. And that is our lateral lunges. So we're gonna, for the cognitive challenge, we're gonna play a game. Um, so Sam and I are gonna trade calling out a sequence. Um, if you have to have something to hold, we'll just work around it as best we can. So since Sam has the chair in front, we'll play with lateral lunges to the left, lateral lunges to the right, and then backward lunges. Your pick, which leg. So I'm going to start. I'll call out some movements. Sam's going to try to remember them. And then the next round, you can add one. And then I'll have to try to remember. And we're going to try to keep growing it each time until we can't remember. All right. You ready? All right, let's do it. so let's do, how about right, right, back, left. So, this is all Sam, I'm making sure she can remember this. <laughs> okay. All right, we're gonna do right, right, back, left, right. Okay, so let's see if I can remember that. Right, right back, left, right. Okay. So how about we do right, right, back, left, right, back. Right, right, back, left. Right, back. Right. Now for you, take a second. See, can you remember that sequence that we just did? Right. Can you recall it? We'll do one more round. We'll add one more component. So we will do right, right, back, left, right, back, back. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's see, we have right, Right, back, left, right, back, and then left. Oh, <laughs> I got him. You, she got me. You have better working memory than me. All right, that was excellent. All right, awesome. that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> All right, so, oh, we'll grab the chair, sorry. 
Um, so if you have not been using a chair this whole time, go ahead and grab one. We're gonna use it for just a brief stretch. We'll sit, do a couple more stretches, cool ourselves down, and that will be it for your class today. So holding the back of your chair, start nice and close to it. We're gonna walk back to a tabletop um, stretch. So keep your hands on the back of your chair or counter, walk your feet back um, so they're underneath your hips. And then you might feel a little bit of a stretch in the back of your legs. You might feel it in your mid back, your lower back, even in your shoulders. You might feel all of the above. And then walk yourself back up to your chair. We'll do that one more time. Walking back. And you can keep a soft bend in your knees here, so just don't lock them out. Breathing into that stretch, finding some length through your spine, and walk yourself back up. And we'll go ahead and take a seat. I'll have you sit um, closer to the front of your chair here. We'll kick one leg forward, have your heel down on the ground. Try to pull your toes back and sit up really tall. We're going for a hamstring stretch. So just sitting like this, if you feel a stretch behind your leg, you're free to stay there. If you need a little bit more, lean forward um, for a little stretch. Again, behind your hamstrings, you know, in your calf muscles, you might feel this. And just breathe into the stretch. Holding just a couple more seconds. And we will switch sides, other leg forward, pull your toes back, sit up nice and tall, and try to keep your spine long if you want that forward fold uh, to make your stretch a little bit more intense. Just make sure shoulders don't round forward. We keep a nice long spine. Couple more seconds here. And then up nice and tall, we will just take a few ankle circles. So just pick up one foot circle a couple times, then do the other, do this at your own pace. Still trying to sit tall if you can, but of course scoot back, rest into the chair if you need it. We'll go one more on each leg, couple circles, and then plant your feet and get yourself nice and comfortable. All right, and then why don't we end with a nice calming breathing exercise. This is a very simple exercise. We're gonna be taking some nice deep breaths and then holding them for a little bit and then slowly letting them out. So this has three parts. So first you have to breathe in. So you're gonna take a nice deep breath in through the nose and you're gonna do this to a count of four. So nice and relaxed in the chair, you shouldn't feel any tension, and you're just gonna deep inhale. Let's practice one before we do it. So breathe in, two, three, four. Okay, that's our four count. Once you breathe in, you're gonna hold that air in your lungs for a seven count. So this isn't a bear down and hold, this is a relaxed hold. So your lungs are full, your chest is out to here, but we're just relaxed, we're holding for a seven count. And then you're gonna breathe that air out for an eight count. So you can purse your lips if you like, like you're blowing out a candle, but you have to pace that exhale for a full count to eight. All right, so why don't we do a couple rounds now? So we're gonna breathe in. Three, four, and hold, relax, two, And then slow exhale for one, two, three, four, five, six. Get all that air out. Eight. And another breath in. One, two, three, four. And hold. Relax the shoulders while you hold. No tension. And exhale for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight. All right, good. Well, hopefully you feel nice and relaxed after doing that. Uh, thank you again for joining us for the Parkinson's Foundation uh, Health at Home Fitness Friday video series. This was a lot of fun today. Um, for more information about the Parkinson's exercise recommendations as a prescription for people with Parkinson's, please visit parkinson.com 
forward slash exercise. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the day now that you have gotten your dual task workout and handle whatever life throws at you. All right, bye guys.